Disney and these people are showing partiality and they're sinning. Scott Sauls apparently thinks that's fine. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we're going to be talking about a woke preacher. I haven't done that in a little while. Coming up next. I always have to like my next move is grab the coffee because you know i have a coffee i hope you do too let me know in the comments below coffee or tea and how do you like your coffee or tea you like it iced sugar cream let me know we're talking about scott souls scotty souls <laughs> now i have allergies <laughs> hence the sniffling forgive me um but I know a few people have done this. Uh, my buddy over at Dear Woke Christian, Jason Whitaker, covered Scott Sauls a while back. It was this very video. I haven't seen his video in a while. Hopefully, it's not too similar. I don't. I really don't think it will be. It's very hard for it to be because I'm not plagiarizing. I'm like some people. Um, the president of the SBC, just to be clear. And then John Harris looked at the video and then also talked about Scott Sauls a little bit recently as well. So they're both excellent podcasters and and youtubers and whatnot so why not copy them right but no there's a few different things i want to look at just a different angle it's something that i actually i've wanted to look at for a while and i've been curious exactly how how people really reconcile this in our minds let's just look at it let's just look at it we're going to be looking at the census of 2020 that just happened right even though there was a raging pandemic and there's, you know, since every 10 years, because it's just how we do it. And so we're, we're going to look at that. And we're going to look at 2010 and 2020 and see if you understand what I'm, where I'm going from, coming from. Um, but right before that, let's look at some Bible first. A lot of times I will look at the Bible at the end. Ephesians 5, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things are to be exposed and made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, and he quotes, Awake, you sleeper. Wake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Christ will give you light. So notice real quick, micro Bible study. Jesus is the one giving light. Not us. It's not us. It's not in us. It's not light skin. None of that nonsense. Don't think that. I'm not anglicizing it or Europeaning that or whatever. Caucasianing, baptizing. No, none of that. It's the light compared to darkness, right? God said, let there be light. It's not light skin, dark skin. It's not what it is. Get that woke ideology that's brainwashed you for however many weeks or months or years out of your mind. That's not what he's talking about. Rather, he's talking about being able to see, right? We need light to see. When it's dark, we go to sleep. God has made a cyclical world in that way for us. This is how it works, right? Men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because they're pretty good people. Because they just need a little nudge into heaven. No, because their deeds are evil. Colossians 3.25, anyone who does wrong will be repaid. Excuse me will be repaid for their wrongs. And there is no favoritism. That's NIV, NLT. If you do what is wrong, you will be paid back for the wrong you have done. For God has no favorites or shows no partiality, favoritism, King James. But he that doeth wrong shall receive the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. God is no respecter of persons. And he isn't, right? It doesn't matter how much melanin you have, how tall or short you are, how fat or skinny you are, how fit or unfit you are, how well you speak or how terrible, how many languages you speak, or if you barely can't even speak at all, whether it's mental illness or a handicap or you're just lazy, it doesn't matter. God shows no favoritism. Please, subscriber and watcher, if you've not, Subscribe, by the way. Please subscribe. It's free. I won't charge you anything. I promise. But see this and know this and understand that, like, we're all in the boats together. We're all in the same boat. 
Yes, there's distinction between men and women. Yes, there's distinction between parent and 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 uh, children and pastor and church and government and citizen. There are distinctions. I'm not saying there's no distinctions. It's showing the partiality. That's the trouble. So without further ado, let's look at old Scotty Sauls here. I didn't speak on behalf of, of white people. I'd rather speak to white people. Um, and that is that um, when you're so accustomed to um, being in the majority, um, you watch the sitcoms and they're mostly built around white life and white assumptions and Eurocentric realities. When you look at the history of American politics and power, it's the same. Uh, when you look at where the money is, it's the same. Okay. Okay. I, I can't, I can't really endure too much of nonsense like that. So what does he say? I'm not going to speak as a white person, but to white people. Well, first of all, there is no white people. There isn't. Okay. Those are not biblically anyway. They're, those are godless terms. Now, I don't say godless in the most wicked, heinous way, but they are godless terms. They're the world's terms. That doesn't mean the world invented, you know, indoor plumbing. We can't use it. So what I'm saying. But what I am saying is we're showing partiality, aren't we? We're showing favoritism. What is going on here? Right. He's saying you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be you should be sorry. TV shows politics. It's all about you guys. And he says this as a guy who looks like he could be my dad. Less melanin, right? Also less hair. Does that mean he's more wise or less wise? I'm starting to, I think, lose my hair in certain spots. I don't really, I like my hair personally. I don't really like with short hair, but it is what it is. I could wear a wig, I guess, right? I could dye my skin, but that doesn't count, does it? But a man can be a woman. This ideology doesn't make any sense, but that's their whole goal. I remember the 90s, the 80s, Bill Cosby, his show, Family Matters. I remember watching those shows and enjoying those shows and having caring zero about how much melanin they have. Zero. But then some people would be like, well, they both work. They're both together. They're a husband and wife. Yeah, because God said that that's the best way to do it. Well, they're just being white. No, no, no. Not being white. This isn't an ideology. Sorry, Robin D'Angelo. You're lying. All you're doing is hustling. If she made no money doing what she's doing, she wouldn't do it. But that goes for a lot of people. They're just hustling. They want more melanated people, gifted people with more melanin, melanated plus, black, African-American, whatever term you want to put in there. They want brokenness because it's actually a form of racism to show partiality, to show and say, oh, poor you and pat on the back. That's what affirmative action is. I've got a head of conversation with uh, Rico Nyes. He's a fellow YouTuber. You might know him. I talked with him a while back. And he's saying they think we're stupid. I need a different test to get into Harvard and Yale. I need a, a different thing to get. I just watched a skit right now with a comedian. Very funny guy. He does a great Trump <clears throat> impression, a bunch of other stuff. You might have seen him. He's got a big, huge beard. His name's Tyler Fisher. And he was doing a, a, a formal interview with a guy on some news network, you know, some smaller one. And he was saying that he didn't get the job. They liked him. He was funny, everything. He didn't get the job because he's a white male. And they're doing this all over the place. We see this now with Disney, not only with uh, skin tone, but also sexuality. Showing partiality. It is sin, ladies and gentlemen. Disney and these people are showing partiality and they're sinning. Scott Sauls apparently thinks that's fine. Now, does he say that he thinks that's fine? No, but he's already changed his mind and his worldview in these things. He's already washed himself in it and now is now speaking from that. Or of God in general. Is God just your grandfather, you know, wringing his hands, worried about the next thing? Or is he a meticulous God who doesn't ever care about you and doesn't want to hear your prayer? Or is he a heavenly father who's also king? Which is it? Your view of God is the most important thing about you, as A.W. Tozer often said. Stay tuned for the census. We're going we're, we're to look at some census stuff in a minute, okay? So just hold on. Hang tight. Uh, and are there exceptions, of course, but this does put um, my race, my ethnicity, by the way, realize that you have 
a culture if you're white. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. Crazy. You know, th there's not, you know, even phrases like ethnic food. Um, <laughs> white American food is ethnic food too, right? Um, but it, we, we just have these implicit ways of expressing uh, our own normativity in American culture that, that because it's the air that we've been breathing, we don't even realize what we're doing. Okay. And so what is he doing? He's indicting us for that. He's indicting us for that. Now he's being very kind, I guess, maybe. I don't know. That's the best word. But he he's, oh, yeah, this is what it is. Okay. But how should it be otherwise? Because if I were to start wearing dreadlocks, right, or, or, or more brightly colored African style clothing, or eating only rice, or other types of food, and ta and talking and, and do and talking in a different way, would that get me very far? No, more people would say, "What are you doing? Why are you culturally appropriating?" So it's the old "damned if you do and damned if you don't," isn't it? Right. As opposed to meritocracy, where you work for something, you have a talent, you hone that talent, you have a gift, and you work on that gift. Rather, it's, well, what you look like, what you don't look like. Because I didn't have a choice in what I look like. Neither did you. Neither does anyone. And yet now, all of a sudden, I'm guilty, and this is basically what he's saying in a very flowery, um, big Eva type way. This guy's in the PCA, by the way, not the PCUSA, PCA. It's the equivalent to the Southern Baptist Convention, but Presbyterian. Okay? So we're not talking about some offshoot crazy anything. We're talking about a guy who is in Nashville, the Bible Belt. Like, Christians, stop talking like that. There is only one race. There is no racism in the Bible. It's partiality. It's ethnic, if you want to go so far, partiality. And even that it wasn't because people were going back and forth with even having people, once they became a Jew, or should you become a Jew if you're a Gentile, do you need to be circumcised, keep the food laws to come to Christ? No. Galatians. Read Galatians. If you need something to read today, read Galatians. Five chapters. I gotta, I'm just going to preach on it at some point soon because I just, I read it very often. It just, it needs a, it needs a sermon series. But anyway. Galatians is the book of the hour, in my estimation. It's another gospel. It's another, it's a cult. Now, the cults always start like this. And as Jason from Dear Will Christian says, and you've probably heard him say it if you watch his channel too, CRT is a cult, or wokeism in general is. And so now is a time, because it, because it's a time in many ways of reckoning. Uh, reckoning. First with, with, with black voices that have been willing and empowered and emboldened to speak up about how painful the last 350 to 400 years have been, um, as well as now uh, 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 Asian Americans who are, are speaking out uh, in light of what happened in Atlanta and, and how that's triggered realities. That so is he talking about Asian Americans who don't get into Harvard and Yale and Princeton because they're Asian? Making room for lesser smart, lesser intelligent other ethnicities? Is that what he's talking about? Again, when you erase the meritocracy, which is, I want to go to Harvard Law. Right? That's where all everybody goes, right? But don't you want the best person? Don't you want the best guy to perform lung surgery or stomach cancer removal? Don't you want the best pilot? Don't you want the best guy working on your car? I don't want some guy who looks a certain way screw up my Honda van. Why? Well, he doesn't know what he's doing, but you know he got the job because... You know, the governor here said that everybody needs to hire more ethnicities. We don't do this with other things. And yet we have to do this with, you know, quote unquote, life. It's silly. It's just, it's utterly, I mean, it's such a silly, it's sin is what it is. That our Asian brothers, Asian American brothers and sisters have been living for so many years. It's time for us to just pay attention, <laughs> be quick to listen, slow to speak, and don't shut people down. Um don't, don't call upon the one black voice that's saying the opposite of what most black voices are saying and say, see, see what this black person says. Therefore, all of this is something I don't need to pay attention to or deal with. Don't do that. That's OK. So, again, no one's saying that partiality isn't happening. I'm not saying that. I don't I don't know anybody in my friend group, church, YouTube, co-creators, 
I don't hear any of that. Rather, it's showing par- you are showing partiality when you're saying, hey, now you just need to sit down and shut up. Me? I have, n- uh, I have no voice compared to Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton or Supreme Court Justice or Barack Obama, right? Or Gavin Newsom or Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump or even Joe Biden, although, you know, Biden can't really talk, but... It's just all you're doing is you're lumping people together in the effort to be like, oh, let's show not partiality. Let's not do these things. Let's be kind. Let's sit down and shut up. You're showing partiality in the effort to not be racist. You're being racist in the effort to not suppress people. You're suppressing people. You understand how stupid this is, how wicked this is, how subversive this is. Asian people, the last 350 to 400 years. Yeah, when was that? Oh, that's when the first slaves came to America. Okay. Was America the only place that had slaves? No. The whole world had slaves. Or as one theologian puts it, a thousand years from now, they're going to look back at us and say, how are you using cars? How are you using burning and, and, and all the stuff with the fossil fuels? You knew it was bad. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, I got nothing else. I mean, I drove a Prius. Yeah, but the Prius and the batteries, the lithium and all that other stuff destroys, a different word, destroys the planet as well. It's just as bad. But it's all about money, isn't it? Just like slavery was all about money, or at least I would say predominantly. But Europe had it. The Arabs had it. The Arab slavers would come over. They were far more cruel than, than the American slavers. Does that make slavery good? No. What it does, it makes slavery a reality for everyone, okay? We're all guilty. Everyone, 100 years, 200 years ago, rather, was guilty of slavery in one way or another. But it was a reality that we all were a part of. Okay? Including the Africans who sold their brethren into slavery. Okay? People don't really know that. They just think the white man came over and stole a bunch of people. Yes, that happened. Also, there was plenty of chief and and leaders in tribes and so on that would take other people, other tribes, and sell them off or take their best, or their weakest, or whatever, and sell them. Breaking up families, on and on and on. Slavery is heinous, yes, but it's not this cookie-cutter, white-against-black nonsense. Because there were plenty of white, European, anti-slavery, abolitionists, just like we're abolitionists for abortion today. But the people who are standing against the abolition of abortion would be the same people standing against the abolition of slavery. Okay. It's easy and comfortable to sit 150, 170 years later after slavery has been finished with millions dead in a civil war to say, yeah, oh, slavery is bad. Is abortion bad, though? Well, I mean, exactly. If you waver on that, you would have wavered on slavery 100%. I have no doubt about that at all. None. Census. All right. So the census. Changing Population, the United States, 2010, 2020, 20 million more people. Wow, that is a lot more people. Not more than China, but a lot more people. <laughs> Between Texas, 10 and 20, um, Texas had the largest growth, 4 million. I wonder why. Among the counties, Maricopa County, the largest growth. Cook County, Illinois, the largest decline. Oh, I wonder where Cook County is. I wonder where is that? Oh, that's in Chicago, isn't it? Yeah. Only 100,000, not even 100,000 people left Chicago. Surprised. I would think more people would. Changed over the years. We don't want to look too much. I'll put this in the description. But let's not forget, there's other ethnic groups. Here we go. This is what I want. How has the racial ethnic makeup? No, we don't need racial. See, this is a world term. There's one race, ladies and gentlemen. One race, you're either, and ultimately, you're either in Adam, you're either in Christ. That's it. One race. God created perfectly. And this is why the Bible speaks to reality and not some fantasy land uh, evolutionary paradigm where they constantly change it every few years. That's silly. I want to deal with reality. I don't want to deal with some machination from some unbelieving scientist. Sorry. Back to this. 2010, 2020. So, Pink, as you would guess, is white, non-Hispanic. Could say Caucasian, could say less melanin, European descent, blah, 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 blah. So there's less white people, right? 4% less. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, I don't. 
I'm not literally, I don't care at all. <laughs> at all. What's this other big one, though? That's black people, right? African-American? More melanin? Oh, no. Oh, Hispanic slash Latino. I love how all of these are non-Hispanic, except for Hispanic. There's American Indian, Asian, Black, Native Hawaiian, and other Pacific Islander, multiracial. See, there's only one race. That's just a stupid term. And white. And they all have non-Hispanic next to it. As if... Now I'm triggered. I'm triggered. You're comparing the benchmark is Hispanic, and so everybody else is non-Hispanic? Excuse me? Why Why is everything non-Hispanic? Why is it non-white? White people are the majority. By far. Now, some people might hear that immediately and think, oh, white pride, you're arrogant. Oh, you need to sit down, whitey. No, this is just the reality of it. How else are we supposed to have what we have? So in 2020, right now, basically, there's almost 60%, 59.7. Hispanic, almost 19%, 18.6. Then African-American, 12.6. The smallest growth, mind you, right? Even smaller than Asian. Asian in 2010 was 4.8. Black, African descent, if you will, 12.3%. In 2020, 5.9% for Asian, so 1.1% increase. Black, 0.3% increase. I wonder why that is. Is it because two-thirds of women who get abortions are black? The people who want to stand for abortion rights are the very racists who hate black people. They do. The Margaret Sangers of 100 years ago have cloaked themselves in other ideologies, tricking you once again to pretend that it's not about, oh, those people over there, they, they're the racists. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they are. And yeah, they're not. Just moved from the regular plantation to the plantation of the Democratic Party. But how are we supposed to live exactly, old Scotty Sauls? How are we supposed to do this? The majority population still by far is your European descent, lighter melanin. I hate the terms. They're stupid terms. I hated these terms even before I was a believer. I thought it was stupid 15 years ago when I was walking in darkness. I still saw the hypocrisy even before all this woke nonsense. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but it is what it is. And then what about this? Indian, 0.7, and then 0.7. What about the Indians? What about the African, excuse me, American Indian slash Alaska Native? Also, I'm Native American. Why? Because I was born in America, and so are my parents. How long do you have to be here before you're Native? Or is it just a category? See the hypocrisy here? And why are we talking about black and white, but we don't talk about other colors, quote unquote? Now, there used to be red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves his old children in the world, right? But, oh, we don't want to talk about red and yellow anymore because that's racist. But black and white's not racist. Okay. <laughs> like, it's just, do you see the hypocrisy? But this is what I, I want, and we'll close with this. This is what I want y'all to see, if you don't already see it, is the, they want chaos, people. They want you to say and think, you need to get this jab. It's not your body, your choice. And then other people, the same people that are saying, get the jab, who are forcing it, medically, government, job, are the same people that says, my body, my choice, I get to murder my baby, right? And the same people that say, I'm outraged that children, you know, sixth grade, six, six year old, seven year olds were murdered in cold blood by an insane person who was Hispanic. Not like that matters, but they don't talk about it, do they? But they did in Buffalo because he was a white supremacist, supposedly. But they didn't in New York with the other guy who was a black supremacist, supposedly. See that total partiality? It's wicked, people. And I hope you see it. And that's part of this channel is being against that. That's the that's the impetus of the channel. I don't even just part of it. But, but being against the world, contra mundum, but for the world. Because the world is passing away, Jesus says. But I have overcome the world. So... Cling to Christ. Turn to the king. He's so much better. He will forgive you. He will take you. But you have to raise that white flag. You have to say, I can't do this life. This world is wicked. This world is falling away. This world is broken. I'm a sinner. She's a sinner. He's a sinner. These people have messed up. They're, there's wars and famines and diseases. Children are dying. What is going on? Jesus has overcome the world. Turn to him if you've not turned to him.
repent and believe the gospel, that good news, that Christ lived the life and the death and the resur and resurrected. So you don't, because you can't. But how, just back to Scott Sauls for a moment. How are we supposed to do this, Scott Sauls? How are we supposed to do this? Because, and especially in the 80s and the 90s, these numbers were much higher, weren't they? Right? By increase, it was probably high 60s, maybe even 70%. I don't have it. Well, let's look and see. Actually, it is right here. Let's see if we can change it. Uh, let's go back to 1990. 1990, 75%. Now it's 60%. So there's 15% decrease. Okay. Again, am I mad about that? No. People move around. Okay. I don't have some ethnic pride. I'm thankful for who I am and what God made me, just like you should be thankful too. Shouldn't be white guilt or feeling bad. I didn't own slaves. I didn't vote for Jim Crow laws or redlining, or I didn't vote against the 1964 Civil Rights Act, although many Democrats, most Democrats, I think all Democrats actually did. But, you know, they're the party of compassion, aren't they? This isn't just a Democrat Republican deal because there's plenty of leftists, uh, leftism in the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, too. It's just more pronounced in the Democratic Party because that's on their platform, you know, killing babies and whatnot which of course is showing partiality. So we see this 1990, 9%. So Hispanic, oh, excuse me, Hispanic has overpassed black people. So in 30 years, the increase in black, African-American, more melanin, whatever you want to use, has not even increased 1%. Oh, mercy. Not even 1% in volume. Why aren't people upset at Hispanic people for surpassing black people? Ugh, racist. <laughs> like, it's, again, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Please see this, the stupidity. And if your pastor talks like Scott Sauls does, call him out, maybe privately, or you see somebody else talking about these. Oh, we need this. We need this. The TV shows are meant for these people. If we go to Nigeria or, I don't know, China or Brazil, Japan, should I get upset if I go to Japan and everybody's Japanese? No. What if I, what if my grandparents went to China or Japan as missionaries and I'm living there, third generation Japanese person, because I was born in Japan. Am I Japanese? I mean, by some standards, yes, but quote unquote, ethnically, I'm not. But this goes all the way back to Babel right? and, the, and the languages that God split up. This is where language came from. There is no evolutionary uh, explanation. They kind of clamor in the darkness and try and make up something and hope for the best that people don't really pay attention. God broke up the languages and he broke up the languages so much so that certain groups and DNAs stayed within that. If you only have so many letters, you can only write so many words and thus books and chapters and volumes and so on. This is what it is. You look at our DNA like a letter structure. You only have this certain amount of DNA and you can only work with that DNA. Now we have this multiculturalism in the last century that things are kind of getting worked back in. Kind of the leaven is being worked back into the dough as it were. But if, you know, European people only had A, E, M, O, and S, that's it. And then people who went down to Africa after Babel, you know, had B and Q and O and I and N and S, you know, they might have a little over here and there's some overlap, but the point is, and I'm getting a little technical, but the point is that they only had this to work with. They only had this to work with. They only had this to work with. And that's why people look the same. Um, and that's not to say that the black voice that's saying things that other black voices aren't saying should be shut down and canceled as well. Right. But yeah, I mean, at least he's true on that, but here's the thing. The, the mob is scarcely right. Right. Like, I mean, there's like almost, I mean, there's millions and millions and millions of Muslims in the world. Millions. I think there might be almost a billion, if not a billion. Are they right? Cause there's more Muslims than there are Hindus or Mormons. 
Hardly. The mob is scarcely right. Um, pay attention to what the majority of the minority <laughs> communities are saying and learn what you can from a humble place um, or else it's just going to get harder for everybody. What I'm not saying is that there's not partiality, that there's not real oppression. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is having people feel sorry for watching white TV shows like Boy Meets World and Step by Step and The Brady Bunch. Well, there was in 1990 when most of those shows around that point were 75 percent of the people. If you have people and you have 75 percent, I mean, in Congress, in most places, it's 51 percent as majority. You have 100 people. We all vote for this thing. And 51 people get to vote out 49 people. That's how it works. That's majority rule. That's a super, super majority of 75 people, 75 percent. So you now have 100 people, just again, for the analogy, in 1990, 75 out of 100 people, out of 100 Americans, are white, right? European descent, as it were. After Babel, that's where those people landed. That's why people from Norway and England and Spain all kind of look very similar and not. And people from Nigeria, the Congo, and Zimbabwe all look kind of similar, right? It's not that hard. That's why people from China and Japan and Korea all look kind of similar. Right? <laughs> it's really not that hard. It really isn't. And, and it's, a, it's worth a study, if you're interested at all, in looking at uh, scientifically and, and not the godless scientists. I mean, you can look at them, of course, but they won't have many answers. But to see how this worked out. Right? So in 1990, we have 75 out of 100 people prefer eating popcorn and drinking Coke at the movies. So what are the people going to do who run the movie theaters? Are they going to have chocolate bars and Diet Coke only? No, that would be stupid. They want to sell stuff just like TV shows. People like what they see and they like what's familiar. And what's familiar is somebody who looks like me and my family or me and my neighbors. There's nothing wrong with that. Please, there's nothing wrong with that. And Scott Sauls, without saying there's something wrong with it, says there's something wrong with it, right? Well, we need to, uh, you just, uh, well, you know. And this kind of like pious, half, you know, mature, half older guy sort of, uh, we just need to, you know, we just need to, you know, what? What exactly do we need to do? What do I need to do? I need to sit down and listen. Yeah, okay, your ancestors were oppressed, okay? My ancestors were oppressed too by Rome in the Germanic tribes hundreds of years before your ancestors were. Do I win because that oppression's older? No. And neither do you because it's newer. You weren't oppressed. Neither were your parents or grandparents. Neither was I or my parents or my grandparents. Why don't we be thankful for the blessings that we have that a country, a republic for which it stands, one nation under God, right? As the thing, you know, you know the thing. All men are created equal. We're recognizing what the reality is. Freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of religion, freedom to defend yourself. Why? Because murder is a sin. I have the right to life because you don't have the right to murder. And likewise, reciprocated back. Oh, what is that? That's the sixth commandment, isn't it? Also, you shouldn't worship other gods. Also, you shouldn't worship idols. On and on and on and on and on. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. This kind of went uh, a little longer, but thanks for sticking around. And um, yeah, check out some other videos. I've got quite a bit of other content. If you're new to the channel, I've got my videos where I talk. They're called Contra Talk. They're longer form where I just kind of sit back and ask questions. I've got one of Jason Whitaker from Dear Woke Christian dropping tomorrow, Saturday, May 28th. So look for that. Uh, those are also on Spotify, Apple Music, and Google Music. So you can just search Contra Talk and find those on those favorite platforms. Just audio, of course. But if you want to watch the video, you can watch them here on YouTube. Please share this. Please like it and uh, comment, too. All that stuff is free. It takes a few minutes uh, or a few seconds, even. And it helps the algorithm, that whole thing, drive that further. So y'all take care. Be against the world for the world. We'll see you.